So the tools you're going to need to change this pump seal, the shaft seal for the Hayward Super Pump, is going to be a wire brush, 7 16 wrench, 9 16 socket, a pair of small channel locks, a screwdriver, a quarter inch driver, a big pair of channel locks in case the impeller is a little bit stuck, some silicone or gasket lube, and then the actual pump seal itself, which is a PS201, which is a US seal. Um, so here we have an older Hayward super pump. Um, you can tell by the motor that it's got definitely got some age on it, but these pumps haven't changed over the years. They still use the same motor, same wet end. Um, the only problem with this one is we're seeping water in between the motor and the wet end, which is the pump seal's gone out on it, which is common with these at this age. So we're going to tear this all apart and I'll show you how to replace that. If the pump is still hooked up to the system, make sure the pump is off. Close any valves that you have. And I usually will crack open the top so there's air getting in there, let it drain out. And then we always want to pull these plugs out to drain out the pump itself. Then we can continue on and we'll take it apart. So our first step here is to use our 916 ratchet and we're going to take out the four 916 bolts so once all four of our 916 bolts are out the pump the motor should slide out freely like so this is our diffuser and our diffuser gasket Basically, we're going to pull that off. The next step is to take this impeller off. And in order to get a grip on this impeller, on the back of the motor shaft back here, there's access underneath this back power cap that we can get our 7 16 wrench on the actual shaft itself. Quarter inch driver, take out the screws that are holding on this cap. I've already got these off. We'll take our cap off, and now you can see the back of this motor. So underneath our contacts in here, there's a shaft that comes out, and the 7 16 inch wrench, if you turn it with the impeller, will lock right on that, and now that impeller is locked. If you can't access this shaft back here and get this wrench on, or then this quarter inch driver will fit on here and you can just pull this piece off and basically it'll just come off and then you can access with 7 16th wrench anywhere around the whole thing on this particular hayward motor it's built to get it in there once that's locked we can usually just turn these off if this impeller was locked on there and i couldn't get it off i could use a pair of channel locks i like to put some duct tape on here so i don't damage this impeller but it was free so now we can just spin this off and here's our pump seal it's a two-piece seal and as you can see it's getting wore out in there once that's off you can pull this front plate off and there's our motor Set our motor aside Next step is our impeller. So half the pump seal is on this. So we want to take that off. As you can see, the springs came off, left this piece on. So there's really no easy way to do this besides I like to use a pair of smaller channel locks and try to grip it and then twist it off. Our other piece of the pump seal would be this piece and basically we can take our screwdriver and just tap on this back and it should pop right out so we'll do that and there it is old pump seal so 
So on this, uh, I like to take a paper towel, maybe a little wire brush or whatnot, and clean up all this. Usually there's a lot of calcium deposit. Add up. And I also sometimes like to clean up the threads on the end of this motor. Add on it. So I'm just gonna take it, clean it up. Take the towel. And the actual end of this motor shaft looks good also. And open up our new pump seal and we'll install this. Pump seal comes in two pieces. Piece that slides out on top of the impeller shaft. And then this thing with the rubber boot will slip inside this piece here. So before I slip this pump seal under our front plate here. I like to use some silicone lube. This is a Pentair product. Um, I just prefer using this one. You can use magic lube or whatever else, pool lubricants for O-rings. Um, so basically, I'll take a little bit of this sealant and I'll just rub it around the front of this rubber gasket here, not getting any on this and it'll give it a nice seat inside this front plate. Just a little bit around this edge. Like so. And then basically, with a clean paper towel, I'm gonna push it into place. That's it. And here's our new piece for our impeller. So with our impeller, make sure it's nice and cleaned up. The impeller will actually sit in this. And with that on there, we're just gonna push this on. As you can see, it's got a nice tight fit. With our motor, We've got our front plate, it'll actually say top on it. So you'll want that to go on the top side of the motor. And set her back onto the actual shaft. Lock it, like so. And then we'll take our impeller and we'll thread her on clockwise before it's out. And then that impeller, we just want that nice and hand tight. It's not going anywhere. If you did have to take this off, this would be the time to put that back on. It just sets on there. All right, we'll slip that cap back on. And then we'll put any screws that we're holding the cap on with our quarter inch driver. Sometimes on the sides, if it's been a replacement motor, there's usually one in the back. So after checking our diffuser gasket here, um, if this is bad, um, the, the right part number on this is gonna be the SPX1600R. So you can always order one and go down to your local pool shop, they might have one, and replace this. This one's decent. Some of my Pentair lube here. And goop it up. And also, your diffuser, it also says top on it. So basically, there's some notches here, and it slipped right back in. We also want to clean up and check inspect this o ring and gasket that's in here. So, this seal plate gasket is in good shape, it doesn't have any impressions or whatnot and that's kind of it if you're needing to replace that it looks like it's going to be uh, an SPX 1600T this one's decent so we are going to lube it up with some of our silicone lube I don't know, the next step is just to slip our motor back in, make sure that diffuser doesn't pop off. Like 
bolts started threading. So when we're tightening up these bolts here, you don't want to go too tight because these bolts will actually start stripping into the plastic of this motor plate here. So just feel it snug, give it a little bit of a eighth of a turn. Snug, turn. Now that everything on is tightened back up and in place, we shouldn't have any leaks in between this motor and this wet end anymore. Um, that's it. This motors, these motors are great motors. They seem to last quite a while.